Thank you. Thank you for this invitation. I'm sorry I couldn't be here this morning, but I had another conference. And now we will see if I am uh, young enough to give two talks in the same day in a coherent way. Uh, I'm very happy to be in Helsinki. This is not the first time, but each time I come uh, here, I find some uh, change in a positive direction. And uh, uh, I hope to be able to come also in the future. I, uh, to, today, I'm also glad uh, to open uh, uh, this uh, new program, uh, which I think is very timely. And uh, I want to talk uh, to an aspect which I think is uh, relevant uh, when thinking in terms of uh, globalization. And this is how uh, go globalization uh, challenged not only social movement but also social movement studies. And how uh, social movement studies uh, and social movements can contribute uh, to uh, uh, change uh, the uh, directions of globalization to a certain extent. So the main uh, topics I want to address during this presentation are uh, first uh, the uh, aspects of globalization as challenge but also as opportunity for uh, 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 transformations in social movements and in social movement studies which I think to have, be, uh, uh, to have to be singled out by disentangling, uh, and this is the second aspect, the different dimensions of globalization. Uh, uh, it is uh, um, by now a common statement that globalization has been uh, used uh, as a sort of uh, a garbage can to put in very different type of uh, uh, phenomenon. And I want to address three of them as having an impact on uh, social movements. And uh, the third aspect is uh, looking uh, at the ways in which social movement studies have reacted uh, to uh, globalization by, in a first step, let's say, lumping different aspects of globalization together. Uh, using traditional categories in social movement studies to address trans phenomenon of transnationalizations. And on the other hand, how in a second step uh, from lumping uh, social movement studies shift to splitting in a way, uh, looking at uh, uh, different uh, ways in which uh, uh, globalizations presented themselves in different uh, intergovernmental uh, institutions, in different strategies by social movements, and so on. So these are more or less the three uh, aspects. There is a sort of uh, uh, social movement study paradigm, or there are concepts which in a selective way have become quite dominant in research on uh, social movement, in uh, social movement studies. POS, that is the political opportunity structure, have been considered as uh, relevant for social movements and this uh, uh, has been uh, a move, I think, forward uh, 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 which has been done especially uh, in political science, in comparative politics, when social movements have been acknowledged as uh, political actors. Uh, so not pathologies, uh, as it used, they used to be considered in the past, but as part and parcels of uh, a, a normal political process. Another Concepts which is very much used by social movement scholars, they use a lot of acronyms, uh, uh, apologies for that, is uh, social movement organization. This uh, has been uh, a main concept in uh, research which has looked at uh, uh, social movement organizations as uh, relevant actors for the mobilizations of resources in their environment while past approaches to social movements before the 60s tended to consider uh, social movements in the range of collective behavior phenomenon as mainly 
irrational uh, forms of uh, action or uh, spontaneous uh, and here as well sometimes pathological uh, forms of reactions uh, uh, to frustration and uh, 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 grievances. Framing uh, is also a concept which has been very central, uh, especially has been, uh, say, the contribution of uh, cultural sociology to mo social movement studies and the contribution of uh, 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 constructivist approaches to social movement studies, especially coming from symbolic uh, interactionism, the concept of framing has stressed the capacity of social movements to produce meaning and to produce new code, as a, a social movement scholars, as a, Alberto uh, Melucci used to say. So to produce uh, uh, and to have an impact also on the ways in which people uh, perceive their external environments. Another uh, central concept is the concept of repertoires, which has been introduced especially by uh, Charles Tilly. Uh, Tilly has looked at the ways in which forms of protest have changed, influenced by broad transformations, the construction of uh, uh, the nation state and the development of capitalism how this has produced uh, some types of forms of protest that people uh, inherit from one generation to the next. And of course, this has been uh, translated into strategies to uh, uh, address uh, the political opportunities, to uh, mobilize resources in the environment. What happened when uh, People started, scholars started to talk about globalization. Movements started to address issues of globalization. In the beginning, social movement studies were not very ready to address the issue of globalization because they had developed especially uh, within nation states with the conceptions of social movements as relevant actors for the development of citizenship rights, but within the nation states, and the political opportunities uh, that, they, that have been considered as more relevant have been mainly the national political opportunities. Chuck uh, Tilly, looking at these uh, broad transformations introduced by capitalism and the formation of the nation state, uh, observed that there was a focusing a concentration of protest against the national governments and of social movement organization converging, centralizing at the national level. The history of the labor movement uh, tend to reflect this uh, uh, story. Uh, when uh, uh, um, globalization seems to challenge this vision, uh, the first attempt uh, to adapt social movement categories uh, to the phenomenon of globalization were, uh, as uh, uh, um, one could say, path dependent in the sense that they used uh, their own uh, repertoires of concepts, uh, often adding a T in front of it, and the T uh, meant transnational. So first uh, research uh, looking at how movement developed in a globalized world tended to look at the transnational political opportunity uh, structures. Jackie Smith has uh, looked at the ways in which uh, uh, intergovernmental organizations like the United Nations and other people have looked at the European Union as uh, providing some type of opportunities for movements. And um, I say lumping uh, in this phase because they tended to stress some characteristics of these institutions. So studying the United Nations, the main uh, uh, ideas that developed in social movement studies uh, was that IGOs tend to be characterized by formally closed type of uh, uh, opportunities, lack of electoral accountabilities, and uh, selective access, 
but that social movements could use some uh, of the informal opportunities um, pre presented because of uh, consensual cultures and so on to try to introduce the element of uh, environmental rights, uh, human rights and so on uh, in the, uh, as producing international norms. The idea was going at the level of social movement organizations that these changes were produced by transnational social movement organizations that were characterized by uh, some uh, differences vis-a-vis uh, -vis the national uh, social movement organizations. Especially the idea was that this group had to adapt to the rules of the game in uh, the IGOs and so that while uh, uh, national social movements organizations tend to rely a lot of, upon protest, the idea was that instead transnational social movement organizations tended to be the very well organized, well structured, centralized uh, uh, NGOs or uh, uh, civil society organizations uh, that uh, could lobby this uh, transnational institution. Uh, another idea in, of this first phase was that uh, uh, the uh, globalization, especially in terms of uh, increasing uh, cultural uh, contact, produced especially an uh, uh, increase, intense uh, cross-national diffusion of uh, ideas. And so that uh, new social movements, uh, especially uh, environmental movements among them, were characterized uh, by a strong capacity uh, to build global, uh, uh, to, to exchange frames and to, to uh, develop cross-national uh, uh, frames. Repertoires, as I said, the idea was uh, it's mainly lobbying, and the main strategy is the one which has been uh, uh, studied especially by Keck and Seeking, looking at the ways in which uh, uh, social movements in countries where political opportunities were closed, for instance uh, in uh, Latin America uh, dictatorship, uh, could use uh, uh, international institutions and a sort of international uh, public sphere uh, as an additional source of resources in order to favor democratization at home. So, so the boomerang idea was the idea that uh, nationally oriented movement could use uh, uh, international uh, alliances uh, in order to produce change. This type of uh, uh, first step of lumping, lumping in the sense of producing a sort of a very homogeneous vision of what globalization was about and the effects on social movements, um, was also characterized by the, uh, addressing a very specific environment. Uh, it developed especially in uh, the early 90s uh, when uh, uh, international relations scholars and other scholars uh, like uh, uh, Seeking or Thomas Rees and others had started to look at the ways in which uh, NGOs uh, and other actors had an impact on the production of uh, international norms. Uh, and this uh, was uh, uh, considered to be as um, uh, the, uh, the ways in which social movements behaved at the transnational level, lobbying uh, uh, IGOs. NGOs lobbying IGOs was the, the main uh, vision. The idea so was that uh, at the transnational level you didn't have much protest because uh, the uh, uh, international institutions were not electorally accountable because uh, a transnational public sphere was uh, 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 jeopardized by the lack of a common language and so on. But then there was uh, a change in the environment. There was uh, uh, Seattle with uh, the so-called Seattle riots with the contestation of uh, another 
uh, uh, intergovernmental organizations which had not been considered so much in the previous wave of studies, the world trade organizations. And uh, there was a recognition also of uh, uh, a lot of protests which had developed also in the 90s, but not in Western democracies, against other uh, uh, IGOs uh, like uh, the uh, World Bank or uh, the um, um, International Monetary Fund, and uh, which also had not been addressed so much by mainstream social movement studies. And in this case, a main change in the perspective, a main uh, transformation which had to be taken into account was the fact that also at the transnational level there was protest, so it was not just lobbying, but it was uh, indeed a new cycle of protest that in uh, Europe developed especially uh, during and after the contestation of the G8 in Genova, and which lasted for quite a, a, a long time. So counter summits, uh, which were an invention of uh, uh, these uh, uh, transnational social movements became also a central uh, uh, moment not only for transnational organizing but very often also producing changes at the national level. So in this phase what happened I think if we look um, say uh, in an uh, extreme synthetic way uh, at uh, the evolution of social movement studies on uh, globalization issues. Uh, it was especially a splitting of different dimensions. So while in the previous phase the impression had been uh, transnational political opportunities are uh, homogeneous for all IGOs, transnational social movement organizations tend to be the same uh, uh, overall and uh, oriented to lobbies. Uh, this new wave of protests brought about a need uh, to start to look at differences within uh, international governmental organizations and within the social movements or the social movement uh, uh, that address them. And, and this produces, I think, a lot of interesting uh, um, results uh, with uh, a lot of empirical research being done uh, by uh, young scholars that uh, tended also to go a bit beyond the orthodoxy of the social movement studies, uh, uh, introducing elements from uh, other approaches and other disciplines. So first ob observations was uh, that the political opportunity structures at the transnational level, at the global level, uh, are very heterogeneous and that it is uh, important in order to analyze the effects of social movement campaigns to see to which extent these campaigns are able uh, to address uh, these different uh, uh, political opportunities. Uh, it was observed that not only the United Nations uh, and the European Union are different from the WTO or the World Bank or the G8 but also that within these institutions there are very different type of opportunities and constraints offered to social movements in different moments. Research done uh, at the European University Institute by Luisa Park has looked at campaigns addressing the European Union, for instance the uh, so-called anti-Balkenstein campaign against uh, uh, a, a directive on uh, labor and economic issues and she singled out the ways in which uh, the campaigns by social movements uh, was influenced also by uh, the uh, specific type of uh, European Union institutions that was responsible uh, for decision making in specific moments so that the strategies of the movements changed 
when the main decision-making power lied within uh, the Commission, when it lied within the Council, when it uh, uh, was more a matter of the European Parliament. And also that within the same institutions, like for instance within uh, the uh, European Commission, it is very important in order to define the winning strategies of social movement to see if uh, uh, a certain decisions is in the hands of uh, a more sympathetic uh, DG, uh, Directorate General, or of another. So this means that also at the transnational level, uh, researchers uh, realize that you have uh, to recognize that there are as many differences in global politics as uh, there are in national politics. Uh, and, uh, as social movement studies had recognized, uh, especially in uh, cross-national comparative research. It also stressed that there were uh, different uh, types of social movement organizations that uh, uh, protested at the transnational level is not only done uh, by transnational uh, organizations, the big uh, uh, environmental uh, organizations, uh, Greenpeace uh, or Amnesty International or Oxfam, but that these campaigns are made of uh, literally thousands of groups that are sometimes local, sometimes national, sometimes cross-regional, uh, and so on. Also, that uh, along the course of the protest, in part as a sort of uh, byproduct of the protest, there was also the construction of a sort of global identity. So that it was not just a matter of cross-national diffusion of ideas moving from the Italian uh, uh, environmental movement or the Italian white overall to the Finnish one, but it was also a matter of constructing uh, common global uh, visions. And that's often the uh, type of uh, uh, actions, repertoires to address uh, uh, IGOs and in transnational campaigns tend to be extremely variegated. In some cases, in counter summits, this was recognized by the organizations of uh, different spaces. Like in Genova, there were different squares where uh, different uh, type of uh, social movement organizations uh, developed their own uh, strategies. The same was in Prague with uh, uh, marches that took uh, and defined themselves with a color and which indicated uh, a strategic uh, position. And also, uh, in terms of strategies, uh, uh, it indicated that boomerang was a strategist, but it was not the only one, that there were a lot of uh, uh, different ways in which social movements tended to address multiple institutions, uh, multi-level uh, uh, governance uh, by using domestication strategies in the sense of protesting at home putting pressures upon their own government in order to address uh, international uh, governmental institutions, but also uh, the uh, transnationalizations of protest in the sense of more and more uh, forms of protest which were uh, transnational. And in uh, this uh, uh, splitting and analysis, splitting I mean analysis of uh, differences uh, within uh, globalization, there was also some reflection on different meanings of uh, globalization and uh, uh, the different uh, impact that uh, uh, this uh, had on social movements uh, and the way in which social movements tended to uh, react to them. In the beginning, protests on, uh, uh, against uh, WTO, the G8, and so on, were defined as no global. Uh, and the meaning was especially uh, globalizations in economic terms. So there is uh, one aspect of globalization as uh, uh, privatization, uh, uh, reduction of uh, 
uh, the uh, state controls over the market, uh, liberalization policies, financializations, and so on, which for sure had an impact on social movements and uh, represented a, a, a serious challenge. It changed a lot of uh, the consideration of uh, 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 social movements even in uh, uh, Western, uh, Northern uh, democracies. Social movement studies had started from the assumption that labor conflicts uh, were pacified, that the class cleavage in Rockanian terms was uh, no longer active. Uh, and that new social movements tended to substitute, surrogate, or um, say, uh, uh, follow uh, the main social movement of the past, which was the labor movement. This was uh, uh, a, a consequence of the so-called uh, uh, mid-century compromise with the development of welfare states and so on. Neoliberalism represented a challenge to the mid-century uh, compromise and to the development of a uh, uh, welfare state and also a challenge to social movement studies that, that assumed that social conflicts were more or less over and that new conflicts tended to substitute for this. Uh, so the challenge here was especially the so-called race to the bottom, the uh, market-driven economy, uh, which tended to challenge some uh, uh, social rights. Uh, they, these uh, uh, economic aspects of globalization, however, offered also some opportunities uh, uh, for social movements, especially uh, the uh, development of uh, a, a neoliberal market meant growing interdependency, and so the possibility also for social movements to play on this type of uh, interdependencies. So from the uh, strikes of the dockers, uh, uh, which have been studied in depth as uh, uh, first examples of a sort of international development of a new international labor movement, uh, to uh, the uh, protest against uh, sweatshops uh, and uh, the uh, uh, over exploitations of uh, uh, people in the southern part of the world. Strategies have developed uh, which to a certain extent resemble uh, uh, pre-industrialization sort of strategies that have been uh, able to uh, extend, let's say, the targets from the political targets that had represented the main target uh, for uh, the uh, new social movements and the labor movement of the past to more complex strategies which through, for instance, uh, uh, political consumerism, boycott, boycott, alliances between uh, uh, transnational alliances uh, between unions and between unions and other social movements tend to uh, put the social question back in as a cent central question, but also to develop strategies that can address uh, uh, this uh, challenge. Of course, the challenge is big and uh, uh, it is uh, unclear to which extent the social movements have been uh, successful in uh, challenging the challenge, or, uh, but there has been some uh, adaptation exploiting the opportunities produced by this change. Second aspect, uh, Sidney Taro has defined it as complex internationalism, the political uh, uh, dimension of globalization. This has meant an increase in number of IGOs especially an increase in power of some IGOs linked to strategies of uh, conditionalities, uh, uh, development of uh, IGOs with uh, uh, different uh, uh, systems of uh, internal decision making and so on. And the challenge is represented here by the fact that several of these uh, IGOs are not democratic at all, and even those that uh, 
uh, are sometimes seen as an examples of the potentials for developing democracy at the global level, some organizations like the European Union are, uh, uh, have clear democratic deficits. So these uh, um, IGOs are, I put, ademocratic, uh, ademocratic at least, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, they uh, have different type of uh, legitimation, but none of them have really a developed system of democratic uh, uh, accountability. And this is, of course, a challenge. In social movement studies, it considered that usually social movements tend to be successful, especially if they are able uh, to find channels of access to institutions, to find political allies, uh, uh, to mobilize the public opinion, but the public opinion has to be uh, capable of uh, influencing uh, those who uh, have the power. And uh, uh, IGOs are more, uh, uh, less uh, easy to uh, address uh, and to channel claims towards than a national state or even uh, local, gov um, local government. But I think that these are serious challenge, but also that it is possible uh, uh, to see in this uh, transformation some uh, opportunities for protest. Especially these movements that had been called no global, in the reality have carried requests of uh, global uh, governance in the sense of the constructions of institutions and policies that could address problems that are more, uh, more and more difficult to grasp at the national level. So very often when we did, for instance, uh, surveys uh, uh, or participant observations of uh, demonstrations or read the documents of these organizations, we said that uh, uh, the, uh, the effect of the social movements addressing globalizations, especially of those who have been called global justice movements and so on, are a sort of uh, legitimation of a global level of governance of the need to construct uh, global norms and global institutions, even if with request of substantive changes in the policies and in the politics of uh, these institutions. The movement strategies to address these aspects have been uh, especially through the mounting of multi-scale type of protest. Uh, the idea earlier on in social movement studies had been that uh, uh, if you look at protest events, you find mainly, overwhelmingly, social movements uh, action at the level of the national state, uh, that social movements tend to address uh, uh, national institutions uh, because it is there that they can get easier uh, channels of access. But my impression is that if we look more in depth in the recent development, if we look for instance at the platforms over which social movement protest, the target is very multiple. Uh, big protest events, not only counter summits, but also protest events on, for instance, the constructions of high speed train in northern Italy, or uh, of bridge over the Messina Street, that Giuseppe knows well, uh, they are all characterized by the fact that the, those who protest uh, address at the same time very different level of governance. The European Union is considered to be as a main institution uh, which challenge the movements but also which produce, should be addressed, targeted and so on. And this, I think, is more and more common, and it, the, the fact that uh, uh, protest is multi-scale. Uh, uh, the, there is uh, what McAdam and others have called the scale shift of protest. And a last, do you, do you still have a few minutes? Uh, a last level uh, of uh, uh, globalization which could also be seen as a source of uh, 
challenges and opportunities for movements, and which is particularly relevant for the construction of these uh, um, new, social, new, new social movements or adaptations of social movements to changing uh, globalizing uh, world, is the cultural dimensions. McDonaldization has been a term used, used a long time ago, but in uh, uh, recent reflection, the um, type of uh, uh, diagn diagnosis of the changes has been uh, um, summarized, especially in terms of de-territorializations, in the sense that while uh, before thinking in terms of globalization, cultures usually were considered to be embedded in nation states. Uh, global uh, transformations uh, have uh, seen uh, the interactions of uh, uh, cultures that, uh, uh, in a way, broke, went beyond territorial borders, so migration, uh, but also uh, the development of uh, exchanges uh, uh, over the world, global exchanges or macro-regional exchanges uh, have produced uh, uh, not so much a homogenization of cultures, but a deterritorialization of uh, uh, cultures as uh, a globalizing uh, phenomenon. The challenges here has been for sure the attempt to develop a hegemonic uh, uh, vision of the world uh, where uh, uh, a so-called one-size-fit-all fit type of ideology uh, with an uh, homogenization of uh, uh, cultural homo homogenizations of one's uh, different uh, uh, cultures. And this is for, for sure a big challenge uh, for movements, some of which are uh, developing a defense of uh, the, uh, their own uh, um, identities and uh, uh, differences. Here as well, however, there is a, a sort of uh, opportunity which has been exploited by movements that uh, has gone together with uh, this uh, uh, glo cultural uh, level of globalization. And this is the intensification of uh, uh, global aspects of communication. The fact that uh, through internet, but not only uh, through new technologies, but not only through new technologies, also with deep uh, cultural changes, uh, there have been a, a development or intensifications of the potentials for communication. And that this has produced very often uh, uh, interactions uh, among uh, uh, local and national movements of very different sites. I, I studied uh, uh, did the case studies of this protest on, uh, against the constructions of a, a high-speed railway system in northern Italy, uh, in a valley up in the mountain. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, local citizens committee had been in intense uh, interactions and had even invited indigenous people from Latin America because uh, they felt themselves uh, as uh, uh, in a similar situation. There was a construction of uh, 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 symmetries, of similarities. They felt themselves to be treated like indigenous uh, uh, people in uh, 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 South America or elsewhere, uh, they uh, consider themselves as uh, struggling, a similar struggle in terms of uh, uh, defending their right of uh, deciding over their own territory. And so this brought about uh, intense interactions between uh, the uh, uh, valley in uh, northern Italy and uh, uh, um, uh, activist uh, of uh, uh, the uh, indigenous uh, groups in uh, uh, South America. To give an example of the type of uh, global uh, scale of communications which 
do not happen only in transnational organizations, but also very often at the local level. Uh, all this, I think, is uh, a main uh, um, opportunity for social movements, but to address them, to capture these opportunities, uh, requires also a readjustment of uh, several of the characteristics of uh, uh, social movements uh, uh, that are developed at the national level. The first and I think most important uh, uh, challenge is uh, the uh, development of uh, uh, tolerant and cosmopolitan identities I uh, brought here. What I mean is uh, the need for social movements that were accustomed in the past to stress especially the unity, uh, the fact that, that there was a, a new actor or a collective identity, the need instead to accommodate diversities. So I think that the, um, especially the most important new development in uh, uh, global justice uh, movements, the movements uh, uh, Thomas studied on the, the um, uh, world uh, social forums and others, is the recognition of a need uh, to respect diversities where former movements tended to build more on unitary vision and also this means the, build, the need to build organizational structure and type of strategies that could uh, make uh, uh, diversities and enrichment. And I think that this is uh, uh, a challenge for movements. What I've seen in uh, uh, my own research is that uh, tolerance of diversities has indeed became uh, a main uh, uh, value for uh, these movements, that there is uh, a recognition of uh, the need uh, to uh, respect uh, diversity uh, instead than uh, uh, producing just uh, uh, one unitary subject. But also that this is a very difficult uh, thing to do, that uh, uh, how to build uh, participatory and deliberate institutions within the social movements themselves, in which different actors can uh, interact in the view of constructing uh, common visions but uh, re uh, respecting diversity, is uh, 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 one of uh, the most difficult things uh, to do for social movements. And the several attempts to reform uh, even uh, uh, social movement type of organizations, the, uh, a struggle to democratize the world social forum, for instance, uh, is uh, a testimony at the same time of the difficulty of uh, uh, constructing uh, this new vision of democracy and social movements, but also of uh, the um, relevance which is acknowledged uh, also by social movement activists today uh, uh, important of these tasks, which I think is very uh, relevant in order to transform challenges uh, of globalizations into opportunities for movements. And I think I will stop here. Thank you.